Should I be creating multiple tables or is there a better way to do this? This is a question we actually wish more people were asking because oftentimes when we're working with clients, they've already built something in a tool like Airtable or SmartSuite and they don't realize that they're creating lots of extra work for themselves by creating tables in situations where they don't need to. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com. This video is part of a series on no-code architecture, the how and the why, the best practices of setting up your own solutions. We've actually gone ahead and ripped off all the ads and put this together as a course. So go ahead and sign up using the link in the description below. So what oftentimes happens is that we see in no-code tools that people have set up multiple tables that really should be the same table. Here are some of the scenarios that we see. One is around a accounts or organizations. Instead of treating them as such, they have one table for suppliers and another table for partners and a third table for customers. Or when talking about people, maybe you have lead records and you have contact records and you keep these two separate from one another. Or projects and tasks, maybe for each kind of project you're creating its own table. So when people create the structure for the first time, I think they're thinking of different business processes. So they say, well, I've got one business process when it comes to my suppliers and that business process is totally different than my customers. And that business process is different than how I interact with my partners. And while it's great to be thinking about how we manage those different processes, that doesn't preclude it from being all part of the same table. One of the principles here is that we want to operate with as few tables as necessary. When we create extra tables that aren't really needed, it adds multiple layers of complexity. Another reason I can tell that people are creating more tables than they need without ever looking at their Airtable base or any other solution is that they'll go ahead and ask the question, hey, how do I copy data from a record in one table and copy that to another table? There are certain use cases where that needs to happen, but I would say 90% of the time, the person asking that question is architecting this in a way that's not the most beneficial for them. Duplicating data leads to a messier database that requires more maintenance. Also, when you're creating things like integrations and automations, it means you have to do double work. Now imagine you go and change a field. Well, now you're always changing that field and you always have to keep things up to date in two different places. Now, part of the reason I think people create tables unnecessarily is that they're stuck in an older world of older software. ERP systems, Microsoft Dynamics, Salesforce, all operate with a lot more rigidity than most no-code platforms. A standard lead qualification in both Dynamics and Salesforce would be to have a lead, and at the point at which you qualify them, you press a button to qualify a lead, and that creates a new contact record, a new account, and a new opportunity. Do you really need a lead record and a contact record? Both of these represent a person, and in this case, it's the same person. So here in Airtable, let's go ahead and create a type for this account rather than actually creating two different tables. We'll add a new field. I usually call it type. Some people might say account type, but in this case, because we're on the account record, account type, type already implies that it's part of the account. I typically choose a single select field, but you might have situations where a multi-select is really helpful. Instead of having those two tables, one for partners and one for customers, Maybe you have an account that's actually both. In that case, a multi-select here would be helpful. We'll add three options for our type, partner, customer, and supplier. If the happy path or the majority here are that they are customers, it might make sense to add a default option. Let's create this field. And because this is all dummy data, I'm just going to drag this down and we'll add customers and drag this down and a few suppliers as well. So here you can see in this view, we're looking at all of our accounts. And I think what happens is that people really want to click tabs across the top to take a look at their list of partners or their list of customers. Instead, what we could do is take this all accounts and we could duplicate this view. Let's call this one customers for our view name. And then let's add a filter. We'll add a condition and we'll say where the type is and we can select customer and look now we have just the customer records and anytime we want to be able to see just those customers we can and we can do the same for partners we could duplicate this again call this partners and now we'll change our filter and change it from customer to partner and you can see if we click over on customers that doesn't affect it now we have our customers view and our partners view and you might say well i don't need all of the fields that are present on my customers to also be present for my partners maybe opportunities is one of those fields we don't care about so we can just go to our hidden fields and we can turn off opportunities for our partners. Now imagine we're on our opportunities. And again, we only want those opportunities associated with our customers or prospects, not our partners. So we can go into this link to the account here and we can edit that. I probably want to change the name here to customer or prospect. 
And then we can limit the record selection to a view because we already created that. So we can limit it to customers or you could filter by the same condition if you wanted to. Let's save this. And now if we're trying to populate a record and we're adding a customer, Notice we can only add those customers. We're not adding the other types of account records that we have. Now, interfaces were perfectly designed for this idea that you have different business processes. So you could say, hey, we need to invoice our customers and it's only our customers and we want to actually generate an invoice. Well, that's a perfect use case for this interface. Or you create an interface just for your customer renewals. Again, this can be done by the type of the account that you have rather than needing to create multiple tables that add unnecessary complexity. Now, SmartSuite also offers some features that helps make this a smoother process for having one table and multiple experiences as well. If I'm looking at a list of accounts and I have different types, again, prospects, customers, and partners, I could go ahead and expand this record. And you can see that we've got different fields here that are presented. We have different sections. We can collapse those sections so that we can see the most relevant information to us. But again, what if it didn't make sense to have opportunity information if this was for a partner? We only want opportunity information if it's for one of our customers. Here we can open up our page settings and go over to section visibility. We can expand opportunities. And here's where we could add a filter or filter group. In this case, we'll say if the type is any of and we'll display it both for our prospects as well as our customers. Let's go ahead and save. So here I'm on a prospect and I can see the opportunity information, but let's open up a partner record. And here, this partner record, we no longer see that opportunity information. So you're essentially creating a custom page layout based on any condition that you want. The other thing about SmartSuite is they offer really granular permissions. So on my accounts table, I could set permissions at that level or even at the field level permissions, we could say override this, and then we could give different levels of permissions. So maybe we only want our customer success team to have access to the accounts that they've been assigned, and we could manage that through the assignee permissions. So what are some situations where you really do need to have multiple tables? One might be if you're using a third-party application. In this case, software has its own users table, and it needs to understand who actually has access to software. Now, I think they're currently working on a feature to help you filter those users, but right now it's taking all the records of whatever contacts table you connect it to. So back inside of Airtable, if I have a number of contacts, I have both clients and partners, maybe I don't want partners to have access to this software application. Instead, I only want my clients to have access. So what I often see people do is they make two different tables, one for clients and one for partners. But what I typically recommend is that you create a new table for portal users. And in it, you have just the minimum information that you need for an application like software to read. So in this case, we've mapped the name and the email address. There's also the magic link, but really it's only the name and the email that have any duplicate information. So why do we have that portal users table? Well, then we can still have this unified contacts table that has all the information about all of our contacts. The only thing that's really different is that we have a linked record to this portal users table, and we've effectively linked this as a one-to-one -one relationship. You could even simplify this process through an automation. You could say, anytime I create a new contact record, if their type is client, let's go ahead and create that portal user record and link to it. Another use case we see is depending on the volume of records. So oftentimes we'll create an activities or an interactions table, and this could be any type of activity or interaction. It could be email, it could be SMS. And so ideally we have this one interactions table or one activities table to store all that information. But if you're doing this with millions of records, well then you're going to run into some issues with limitations around how many records can be a part of one table. But in general here, I think of that innocent until proven guilty principle, the idea that whenever possible, you want to have one table representing one kind of object. Think of that as your default path. And there might be an edge case where maybe you have to create multiple tables, but in general, stick to one when you can. If you have any questions about your own no-code setup, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.